Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you three ways to make liquid shaker cards. So if you've ever thought about making liquid shaker cards but you're not quite sure how to do it, I'm going to go through three common fillers and some of the ups and downs for each one. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned today. Uh, all three of my cards have been made with the new inky stamp set from the rabbit hole designs it's a brand new just released set it's also a collaboration with duff designs and i'm really excited because it's two of my favorites come together to make a stamp set so it's awesome uh, the three fillers we're going to be talking about are hair gel liquid dish soap and then mineral oil each one has a different thickness or viscosity so you'll get more or less movement and uh they can be easier or more difficult to work with depending on which one you're using, especially the mineral oil. That can be a little challenging. So let's talk about what we need to make the shaker pockets. I'm using Ziploc sandwich bags here, and they're just regular weight sandwich bags. And then I've got a, a handful of different glitters and sequins. And then I've also got my hair gel, and this is just inexpensive hair gel. I've got some mineral oil. And then I've got a uh, thicker dish soap, but any dish soap should work. And don't worry too much about the color of, of your liquid because we're going to apply such a thin amount and it's going to be spread out so thin that you won't, you won't see a lot of the color. You can add color to it, but uh, in this case, they're all going to be so transparent that you'll see the ink blended background mostly. So for my first one, I've got about two tablespoons of hair gel into my sandwich bag. And then I scooped in uh, some of the chunky, that's a, a chunky transparent glitter there. And then also a little bit of a really fine iridescent glitter. And notice that I am just moving it around and mixing it in that bag, but I am not trying to scrunch that bag up at all. I don't want to add wrinkles and I definitely don't want to add any little tiny tears or holes into the bag. So I'll just move it back and forth with my fingers and the bag isn't sealed until I've got it all mixed up the way I want it. Then I can squeeze out any extra air and seal it up. And that hair gel does not move. It keeps the, the glitter suspended in there, which is kind of nice. And in fact, that one ended up being my favorite for these types of cards. Uh, next, let's work with the mineral oil. The mineral oil is going to have the most amount of movement and because of that you're going to want to add more pieces inside so I've added a healthy dose of a couple different kinds of glitter and then quite a few sequins here and then I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half of mineral oil you don't need a whole lot again we want it to be thin and I'm going to just go ahead and squeeze out as much air as possible and these just mix up really quickly you can see that you get a good amount of movement. It doesn't move as fast as water, but you definitely get a lot of movement. And you will get settling, so you, you want to add a little bit more glitter than you would normally for the other two types. Now for the dish soap, I'm going to add this really chunky glitter. It's actually more like a roughly chopped iridescent cellophane. And then I'm also going to come back in with some more of that fine iridescent glitter. And I'll go ahead and kind of shake those up a little bit first before I add too much of the soap. Just so that I can kind of start mixing it before the soap comes in. And I'm going to add, I think I added eight pumps of soap. It's probably the equivalent of two tablespoons. And I'm just going to repeat the process where I move it back and forth and then I can squeeze out any extra air. The more that you move soap around, the more little bubbles will form. So if you have any air in there, you will get bubbles. And the more you move it around, the more bubbles you'll get. So if you want to use uh, soap, I would not suggest putting a really detailed background behind it because all those little bubbles might make it hard to see through there. But you definitely get some great movement. Now let's talk about the cards themselves. All three of my cards are A6 size. I just wanted them a little bit bigger because I'm working with kind of larger images. I've got a colorful envelope. I've got a white card base. I've ink blended a background for each of the cards. 
and I just used some distressed oxide inks and flicked on a little bit of water and then I've gone ahead and trimmed them down a half inch from the top and a half inch from the side so that I've got a quarter inch border all the way around and then I've got a card front that's either that green or the blue there and I've die cut some windows from it. I've gone ahead and off camera watercolored my images. I've also watercolored some extra pieces of paper and die cut uh, seaweed from them. So that stamp set is inky. Again, that's from the Rabbit Hole Designs. It's a Beth Duff collaboration project. I've die cut the circle windows and the heart uh, from my nesting sets there. And I've got links to everything on my blog. I went ahead and I die cut some coral and seaweed from this um, Impression Obsession and this Lawn Fawn set. And I've also gone ahead and stamped and embossed my sentiments. And I've already cut those out with that banner too. So now for my ink blended pieces, I want to go ahead and round the corners. My Ziploc bags are bigger than this. So if I just shoved them in into the little pocket there, uh, you would have wrinkles in the bag. So I want to go ahead and wrap them around these ink blended pieces. And then the ink blended pieces also give me a colorful background. But I don't want any of those edges to be sharp and poke through. Also keep in mind when whatever glitter or sequins that you add, you don't want anything too pokey in there because you don't want to spring a leak in your bag. So to go ahead and cover these, it's it's actually really simple. Um, we're going to just sort of move the liquid to the center of the bag, get it away from the edges as much as possible. It's not a big deal if you have some on the edges, but then you kind of lose it. It'll get wrapped around the back and you don't see it, so it's a waste. I'm going to take a double-sided tape. This is a score tape. It's nice and strong and it'll grab plastic just fine. And I will go all the way around with it. And then I'm going to place the ink blended piece face down on top of that bag and then I can just go ahead and pull up the four sides. I'm trying not to squish down into the center of the white piece because then you'll push the liquid out to the sides. And then I can go ahead and fold up my corners and I'm just sort of gently pulling them and be especially careful at the zipper. If you have to fold it like I did here, you want to be very gentle and try not to push too hard. You definitely don't want to open up the bag and you don't want to crack the zipper at all. Then you'll, you'll have leaks. So we want to avoid that. For the mineral oil, this one is especially important to be gentle with um, when you're folding it. And I can just kind of, I squeegeed the liquid to the centers there. But the zipper area is where you're most likely to have an issue. So you'll want to take extra special care. You want to more roll it than fold it. And you definitely don't want to have it pop open or split anywhere there. And I'm just using some scotch tape on all three of these to help hold my pieces down. I'm being very gentle and soft. I'm not pressing too hard. I, I don't want to crease that at all. It's more likely to have a leak there if I were to. And you can see you get some more movement there. It's a lot of fun. But you're also more likely to see the bag underneath. So you can see the wrinkles from it. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding what type of filler to use for your shaker. And then the last one, this one is the hair gel here. And there is, like I said, virtually no movement with the hair gel at all. It's nice and thick. And as long as you don't overfill that bag, it probably won't uh, spring a leak at all. And it's the most sturdy of them. And also your little glitter pieces, whatever you have inside there, will stay suspended. So it doesn't move around unless you push on it. So I think that one ended up being my favorite for this type of card. Now to assemble the cards, all three of them are going to get assembled the same way. So I'll just show you one of them. You don't have to watch me do the same thing over and over again. I took a piece of foam tape, folded it on top of itself to double up the thickness. And then I am cutting it into thirds. So this is going to give me long, thinner strips. This is They're less than one quarter of an inch uh, wide now. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that they fit around the edges of my uh, card front, or I'm sorry, my card base. And that's going to create a well for the little shaker pockets to fit into. So we'll just go around all four sides. And I do like to start at the top because you're more likely to see the top. So I want one solid piece up there. And if I have uh, cuts and where the, the foam is pieced together, I want it to be on the sides or the bottom where you're less likely to notice it. So once I get these all cut and placed in, in there, I can go ahead and pull off the excess, I'm um, sorry, the release paper and put my little shaker piece in and then I can put the window on top of it. And now we have a shaker card. It's in there solid. You don't need to glue it down or anything else. All we need to do now is decorate it. So I've gone ahead and um, pulled out all of my pieces for this card. My sentiment is already stamped and embossed and I will just lay out the different pieces, place them where I want them. And I'm gonna use a combination of PVA glue and foam tape to adhere the pieces to my card. The PVA glue will hold to the Ziploc, but it's not near as strong as the foam tape. So anywhere that I'm just using PVA glue, I'm trying to make sure that those pieces are also touching the side of the card uh, front there. So I do have a paper to paper adhesion, not just um, glue on the, on the bags. Um, but the foam tape will stick to the bags just fine. And then I'll repeat the process for the other two cards and get them decorated. And I decided that I wanted to glitz up the eyes a little bit. So I came in with an aqua shimmer pen on all of the eyelids. Now I watercolored these images, so I am using a little scrap of paper on the side to make sure I don't uh, contaminate one color to the next. And then I'm going to come in with my diamond glaze and just go right over the eyeballs. And I keep my diamond glaze in a, a nice thin gauged fine line bottle and that helps me control how much I apply. But that's it, that finishes up these cards. When these eyes are dry, they will have some nice sheen to them. And so let's go over these again. The hair gel, you get almost no movement, but your pieces will stay suspended nicely and any hair gel should work. You can also add extra color if you want to, to any of these pieces, or I'm sorry, any of these uh, liquids. Now the liquid dish soap gives you more movement, but again, it's prone to bubbles. So I wouldn't put anything with too fine of a detail behind it. And then our mineral oil gives us the most movement. You can definitely uh, get things moving and shaking around in there but it's more likely to leak, so you have to be extra careful. If you can avoid folding the, the zipper, that's the best. And also, uh, you're prone to seeing the little wrinkles of the bag behind it, so just be aware of that when you're making your decision. I hope I have inspired you to give liquid shakers a try. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments down below. Don't forget that the new release from the Rabbit Hole Designs is available now. You can head on over to the shop. Um, I've got links in my blog to all of the products that I use today. And if you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up and go ahead and click subscribe. If you don't want to miss any new videos, ring that bell as well. And here are links to a few more videos. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.